Hello, and welcome to Connecticut Main Street Center's first webinar of 2022. Uh, we're very excited to see you all today. My name is Christine Schulke, and today we are pleased to present the first of a four-part series that introduces the Main Street approach to downtown revitalization. Uh, this topic has been requested by many uh, municipalities throughout Connecticut, so we thought we'd uh, take this opportunity to int introduce everybody to the four points, beginning with our first one today, economic vitality. Um, you can go ahead to the next slide. So at Connecticut Main Street Center, we are the expert resource for developing and sustaining vibrant downtowns and main streets that fuel our state's prosperity. Our mission is to assess, educate, convene, and to advocate to develop and grow our downtowns. Uh, we help, in essence, Connecticut create the kind of places that people wanna live. We assist municipalities, downtowns, manage, um, different management organizations, small businesses, and property owners to be more knowledgeable and to help communities how to bring about incremental economic development uh, that's unique and appropriate for their downtowns. Next slide. Um, of course, we could not do what we do without our very generous sponsors. So first and foremost, I would like to thank our founding sponsors, Eversource and the State Department of Economic and Community Development. And of course, our growth partners, uh, United Illuminating, UIL Holdings, as well as the State Historic Preservation Office. Okay. And of course, uh, our very generous sponsors of our Main Street Forms for the 21st Century, Webster Bank, Oven Grid and the Farmington Bank Community Foundation. We also have our corporate investors, People's United Bank, Capital for Change, Windsor Federal and m and Bank. We thank you for your confidence in us. And then of course, we have a number of strategic partnerships that um, help us help you. One of those of course is FHI Studio, who is uh, our AICP certification maintenance provider. So as a note to planners, this webinar is approved for one CM credit. And at this time, uh, just a couple of quick housekeeping notes. So today's webinar is gonna last about an hour. We will stop for questions at the end, but you can put them into the chat function at any time as we go along and we'll do our best to address all of them. And then at the end, uh, shortly after this webinar, you will receive an evaluation form. Please do fill that out. We really rely on your feedback uh, to help inform us in future webinars so that we make sure that we are being responsive to your needs um, and giving you information that will help you. Okay, moving on. Uh, we would also very much like to thank Liberty Bank who is sponsoring this four point series on the Main Street approach. Liberty Bank is a tremendous friend of Connecticut Main Street Center and to all Main Streets throughout Connecticut. So thank you to Liberty Bank. Uh, so as I said before, I am Christine Schulke. I am the Communications and Strategy Director at the Connecticut Main Street Center. Uh, you may notice that our uh, leader, Kimberly Parsons Whitaker, is absent today. Um, she's feeling a little bit under the weather, so I'm stepping in for her. And with that comes the great pleasure of introducing our two newest staff members. So please join me in welcoming um, Carl Rosa, our Field Services Director, and Kristen Lopez, our new Education and Training Director. We're very excited to hear from them today and for you to see them all today as well. Okay, moving on. So at the Connecticut Main Street Center, we believe that there are six core components that must be addressed for a downtown to be healthy and vibrant. And within each of these six core components are many different facets. Um, the unique combination of which is what goes into making a downtown authentic and lively and vibrant. And the way that we do that, the approach of how we cultivate these things is through the four point approach, which is the next slide. So these four points here are going to be what we address in our four point series, beginning with today, economic vitality. And with that, I'm going to hand it off to Carl to dig into what goes into addressing this topic. Thank you, Christine. So when you think about economic vitality, what comes to mind? Um, certainly, it's important to understand the components of a commercial downtown district. Things like retail, restaurants, cultural attractions like museums and theaters, housing, um, educational centers and schools, um, certainly medical facilities. These are all major components that you would typically find in your commercial downtown district. And so 
we apply activities under the economic vitality approach to these components. And what are some of the activities that we apply to it? Certainly stabilization, certainly business expansion, business recruiting, repurposing our underutilized and big commercial buildings, also um, incentivizing the process of, of uh, your downtown. For example, finding incentives to spur economic uh, and development in our buildings and establishing strategies for commercial districts, future growth and success. Now, all of these components listed are reasons to live, work and visit your downtown, but they can all be boiled down into three areas of focus, assessment, real estate development and business development. So what exactly is assessment? Exactly. Thanks, Carl. Yeah. So um, before we introduce each section, we're going to have a little engagement time. So please get ready to chat in the chat box here. So let's get us talking about assessment. So imagine you're at a networking event and you're talking to a developer who's looking for a perfect downtown for his next project. And he wants to know the type of space and business mix that you have. Would you be able to tell him, hey, I'll get back to you later, or B, you'll be able to shoot off some key facts and set up a tour on the spot for a place that you think is perfect? Well, of course, you want to B, right? You want to be able to shoot off some key facts and set up a, a uh, a tour on the spot, right? And so, um, Carl, tell us how can we get to this place to be able to do this? So under assessment, it's important to know what you have to work with. You have really have to know the spaces involved in your downtown. You have to know your businesses, what they are. And of course, you have to know the downtown demographics, the people who you're dealing with uh, um, in your downtown district. Um, one of the ways to get started is to just do an inventory of all the space that you have and available for sale or for lease. And while compiling that data, you want to have some key um, elements to your list, things like location, available square footage, um, what type of lease it is, um, who the contact people are, like, for instance, who's the building owner, who's the real estate contact person, uh, what condition the office space is in, and whether it's got a historic designation or not, uh, what are some of the zoning regulations involved with it. This might come down to just really uh, putting together an Excel list. Uh, we did this, something similar to this uh, when I was working with Main Street Waterbury. We put together an Excel spreadsheet, which had all this information on it. Um, and we made it easily accessible. We can email it to anybody. It could be sortable. We can share it. We can add to it. It could be merged with other files. But it really gave a comprehensive outlay of all the space in our downtown district for sale or lease. And we updated it on a regular basis. The next step is really to know your businesses in your downtown. Um, and again, compile an inventory similar to what you did for your, uh, your physical space. Know your businesses, what's the name of the businesses, what addresses they're at, where they're located, and um, whether they're retail, food, office space. And again, contact information, who the business owner or manager is, what their phone number, their email address, and critical days and hours of operation as well. It's important to know the demographics also of your downtown. Um, what is the community population, the city or town population? What is the downtown resident population? Uh, median household income, the, your workforce, how many employees do you have in your downtown district? Traffic counts, even student population is important to get to know. And there's resources that you can go to uh, to do your research to get this information. Certainly there's websites that give you census data. Uh, you can go to your regional council of governments to get information. AdvancedCT.org is a great um, organization in Connecticut that'll give you that information. Yukon Extension Community Economic Development Program. You may even wanna do surveys to try and find out some of this demographic demographic information, but it's important to gather that so you know what you're working with and who you're working with. That gets us into the next area of focus, real estate development. Okay, so another imagination exercise for you. So put your, your, your uh, feet in the shoes of a developer that's trying to get a project off the ground. 
what kind of experience do they want to have with your town? Do they want to spend a hours on the phone trying to figure out how to get their next permit that they need or be on the first point of contact with your town? They are quickly connected to who they need to know and what they need to know. Of course, B, right? They want this one-stop shop experience. And so, Carl, what is this one-stop shop? So one-stop shop is if you're a prospective developer and investor that has a particular project in mind, you come into a community, you'd like to be able to sit down with all the disciplines involved so that you can get all the information you need to, um, to get your project off the ground and underway. So you want to meet with people like building inspectors and, and, and city officials, economic developers, the people that are involved with the real estate um, and, you know, fire marshal, people that are going to let you know about permit the permitting process. And you want to have all of those disciplines assembled at a table, almost like a customer service, really, to uh, to give you a level that uh, to move your project forward. And so that's really what one stop shop means. Uh, because, you know, when you're talking about real estate development, the developer wants to ease their concerns, right? They want to know that the community wants them. They want to know what the financing options and funding options are. They want to know who the players are that they're going to be dealing with. And they want to see how the community is really trying to build momentum for the downtown so that they feel comfortable with their perspective of development and investment. Certainly, you want to be in a position to try and mitigate those risks for the developer. You want to, um, you know, when developers looking at certain uh, costs of buildings and developing buildings, you know, they want to know that things are going to move uh, uh, really well. They have to anticipate what their income is and what their rents are. So as much as you can get them information about it, the better. They want to know who their prospective tenants might be. And they want to know that the community supports what they're interested in. You should know the financing and funding options to be able to articulate to them. Uh, are buildings that you're interested in uh, available for historic and federal, federal and state historic tax credits? Does the local municipality offer tax abatement program? Are there matching grants, facade improvement grants? What are the loan packages from uh, uh, local lending institutions? Have the information about financing and funding options available. Know the players. Who are the property owners and building owners? Who are the merchants that might be in some of these buildings? Um, the real estate and broker information, who the lenders are, who will I be dealing with with local government officials, renters, and obviously the, the public that might be interested in seeing development go forward. And then of course, build momentum. For example, not every project that starts has to be a big building uh, development project. You can demonstrate a process of building momentum by just throwing a coat of paint on a building or fixing up a storefront or dressing things up. Start the momentum going first, and then that could lead to much bigger and better things for the future. And that gets us to our third area of focus, which is small business development. for you. Don't be shy. You can you can type in the chat what you think here. Okay, so uh, for every dollar spent at a small business, how much is returned to the local economy? Is it A, 53? Yep. Mark knows it directly. It is B, 67 cents. So that means that every dollar that is spent at a small business, 67 cents is stayed in your local economy versus a big box, big change uh, store. So we know how important small businesses are. But then when we look at our small businesses downtown, what is more important? Is it A, recruiting new businesses or B, strengthening your existing businesses? What do you guys think? Is it A or B? Well, I tell you, it is strengthening your existing businesses, correct? Excellent. Yes, recruiting is important, but not as important as strengthening what you have first. And Carl is going to tell us some strategy that we can use to strengthen our small businesses. So how do you support your small businesses? Well, first of all, you have to promote the district as a whole. 
Um, you want to be in a position to provide training and technical support. Make sure that your downtown merchants and, and businesses are well aware of the regulation and incentive programs and work with your building owners to recruit with purpose. Next slide. And promote your district. You want to establish the, the, the why you're doing this. You want to showcase the assets that exist in your downtown district, and you want to present your potential. We're going to get more into the promotion side of uh, your downtown district when we cover that point in a couple of weeks in our next webinars. But uh, for now, it's important to understand that you want to promote the district as a whole. One program we did uh, for Main Street Waterbury, and this was at the beginning of the pandemic, as we provided and we established a, um, a video mini series called The Heart of Waterbury. We reached out to our uh, businesses downtown who we knew were struggling at the beginning of the pandemic. And we said, if you can take on your phone a five minute video telling people what you do, who you are, what type of services you provide to the community and how the community can help you. And we got a really good response. They sent in the videos to us. We edited them and we posted them. And I have to tell you, between the shares and the likes, it proved to be a very valuable resource and benefit to the merchants at a time when they needed it most. And we use social media as a platform to really get the word out. And it worked really well. So these are just some examples of things you could do to help promote your merchants and businesses. Didn't cost the merchants anything for that program. By the way, you can view that. I think you're going to be able to view the uh, examples of this uh, program um, afterwards, after the event, we'll have a link to view some of the uh, videos that we produced. So you should all be also be in a position to offer training and technical support to your downtown businesses. Things like business workshops, where you can work with your merchants on how to do a good window display or you know, how to make your business secure. Create networking events to bring businesses together so, so they can share ideas and topics. You may also want to compile a, um, a stable of professional consultants that are experts in particular fields relating to downtown, like merchandising or even parking. Uh, there's many uh, consultants that are experts at certain aspects of downtown that you can offer. And you want to make them uh, aware of organizations that can help them further. Uh, CT's uh, SBDC program, SCORE, and Connecticut's WBDC.org. Uh, Those are all organizations that work with businesses on their, their um, business plans and other aspects of helping their businesses grow and succeed and thrive. You should also be the clearing point uh, for providing your downtown businesses with any municipal, local regulations and ordinances and other incentive programs that you know your businesses would be interesting about to, to learn about. So you should be the point of contact for, for those types of things. Get to know what the regulations are. Things like, you know, what do I do with a sign in front of my business? Can I put a sandwich board out there? Can I, you know, what are the ordinances for, you know, keeping the sidewalk in front of my store clean and neat? Uh, is it a responsibility of mine or is it the building owner's responsibility? Uh, what do I need to know? You as an organization uh, should be able to let them know what these regulations and ordinances are all about. And recruit with a purpose. Uh, for example, you know, what would you like to see located in your downtown? What would be a good fit that goes between um, two stores. You have a vacant storefront and there's two stores on either side of that. What do you think would be a good fit to go in that store that would complement those businesses on either side? So you wanna think in terms of clustering uh, uh, businesses together. You wanna think holistically about your downtown layout. Um, and it's important to work with the building owners so they understand what the mission and goal is and they can help you with that recruiting to get the right types of businesses and, and merchants in their spaces. Here's another example of what would be a good fit in this vacant storefront. You know, what would you want to put between the screen printing and the local artists and what should be located next door? Think in terms of the business that would complement the other types of businesses. Go out and find it, get it, and put it in there. Sounds simple, but 
that's really the approach you want to look for. Carl, I just um, it just came to my attention that the chat um, our attendees can only chat with us directly, so that's why we're not having like a robust chat here. But when we put together this slide, Carl and I really wanted to hear from you guys. You know, practicing this idea of recruiting with purpose, um, of using a vacant storefront. You know, this is a real life example um, in Connecticut. You know, um, so please, if you if you send me a chat, I'll, I'll I'll shout it out to the rest of the group here. But you know, this is this is a real vacancy uh, in a downtown. There's a screen printing business, a CBD, a local artisan goods store. What do you think could potentially be a nice fit in this vacant storefront? You know, the first thing that we can look at is some kind of themes that are coming up here. Um, so a food place, specialty food, Kristen, that. I did also a response as well um, for a coffee shop, a yoga studio, health food store. Seems like it would be good fit. Mm -hmm. Fitness, yeah. Pottery, paint and sip. Yeah, I think that these are great. I mean, I think, you know, one thing when you're looking at these types of businesses, we kind of have an artisan uh, um you know, potential pattern here with the screen printing and local artisan goods, right? Um, you can also look at the psychographics of the people who like art and creatives, you know, so maybe they are interested in, you know, holistic, you know, specialty food and fitness, you know, so we really want to be thinking in clusters, um, home decor, jewelry. Right, exactly. And also, Kristen, to your point, it's good to think in terms of what would make someone like bring their car downtown, park, get out and walk around from one place to another. Create that continuous flow of storefronts and activity and businesses that kind of complement each other, but, you know, might contain that hidden treasure you've been looking for. So you're going to walk down the street and walk from one storefront to another and explore. Exactly. And Carl, I also want to, you know, as we're using this real life example, something that you brought up is, you know, it's important to work with owners, right? We're not the building owners, but we want to see this in our own downtowns. And, um, you know, in your experience in Waterbury, can you, we have some time if you just want to share kind of, um, how, how does that work? How, how can you position yourself to work with the owners to solicit certain types of businesses? So when you put on your workshops for, for businesses, you may want to invite building owners as well to this type of a program because the more they can understand the vision and the goals for your downtown, the more they share in that, the more they can see that their building is a building of opportunity and you can program these spaces in the building. So it's just a matter of, of, of bringing them together, presenting them with the possibilities and, and showing them what the, the options are moving forward. If they share your goals and your vision, it's a lot easier than just leaving the decisions up to them and not really realizing what the downtown goals might be. They're just looking for tenants to put in their, in their spaces. And, and you know, it's, it's far better for them to realize what your goals are moving forward than, than not. So I would say networking events, workshops, Make sure your building owners are included in all of that. So just in summary, um, about the three focus areas of economic vitality, assessment, real estate development, and small business development. It involves a strong support for local businesses, you know, stewardship of your historic buildings, marketing your district assets and opportunities, innovation of new ideas and changing trends, creating jobs, working towards the goal of a downtown as everyone's neighborhood to live, work, learn, and play. Uh, thank you, Carl.
Carl, I wanted to just bring up here, we have plenty of time for questions um, uh, that any of you guys might have. Please don't be shy, um, bring them into the chat. And, you know, the point of this presentation was really to get a high level overview of this one, um, one part of the four part main approach. And this is economic vitality, um, which, which encompasses a lot. And all of these four points, um, uh, just as a heads up, these webinars are high level and the level of technicality that we can get into each and every uh, one would, would be, you know, well, it's a full week course that the National Main Street Center actually offers. So <laughs> that's not the point here. But we did get a question. Can you share templates or examples of communication pieces that showcase the assessment key points? Um, yes, yes, that is um, the, the different... Um, areas of, of what you want to collect and to put into a spreadsheet. Yes, for the people, the, the spaces and the businesses. Yes, we will send that out. Um, another question here. Oh, I was just sorry. I just wanted yeah, to we'll build see. on that too. You know, the list, the it's really a, a maintaining a list, but it's, it's going to be unique to your downtown and how you want to lay it out. So you do have to have those important uh, pieces of information in there, like the location, the address, but you may want to include things like what was the former usage of the space or the building, or who, you know, who is the contact point for the real estate? What is the least, what are the lease terms? How much square footage is available? These are all data that you want to put in that, but it's, it's the, the work is in collecting the data and maintaining it and make sure the data is updated on a regular basis. That's really the important part of that. But I would say it's as simple as an Excel sheet. And we can we can uh, show you an example of what we did in Waterbury and send that out to you. Mm -hmm. um, and then there was a clarification to that question. Um, she was referring to external communication pieces to use for real estate development and business recruitment. Yeah, and I think, Carl, doesn't that kind of fall more into the promotion kind of aspect of what we're talking about? Well, we'll get we'll get deeper into that. Yes. I mean, obviously, you know, the key takeaway on this particular point is your approach has to be promoting the district as a whole, showing the options. Um, what is what do you what is your goal for the downtown district as a whole and not in any one individual building or, or business? OK, um, the more you can make the district healthy the better it's going to be for the future, for future opportunities and investment. Mm -hmm. So really, that's that's the approach. And we'll get into the promotion of it in the promotion point that we cover in the, the future webinar. But for now, the, it, it's looking at the district as a whole and not in any one individual um, aspect of it. Right. Then there was a question. Um, the presentation will be shared um, to everyone um, and including some examples and even a little bit more information for, for your reference. And there was another question I got here. Um, there's a question, suggestions for using local media. It is very limited these days, but still a critic critical asset to development. And I think that's what we had just talked about. We'll, we'll get more into media types in the promotion um, webinar. Um, promotion is really kind of all about that outreach, um, branding, positioning, um, which also deals with a lot of re recruiting. And, and just speaking generally, Kristen, as far as the, everything's on the table. You know, everything should be uh, considered to get the message out and the word out as to um, you know what you have. But the important part of this webinar is to help you understand what you do have, your assessment of that. You really have to know what you're working with. What are the, your strengths of your downtown district and its business makeup and what you would like to see? That's step one before you even get into promoting what you have. And also to that point, there's a reason why we used a circular diagram because assessment isn't just, you know, step one that stays on the shelf, a plan that you do every 10 years or five years. It's a dynamic thing as your town changes, as potential demographics change, as um, new businesses pop up, as new people move in, et cetera, or, or move out, right? Um, your job of the downtown, you know, is to make sure that you're nimble enough in, in reacting to what's happening, right, um, in your town. So that assessment piece is, not, is nonstop. And, you know, part of the assessment on that too, Kristen, is understanding the markets 
and knowing if you're really going to be recruiting businesses, you know, understanding what the demand is and the market demand is. That's a little bit of a deeper dive, but at least to have a general understanding that, you know, what are people's consumer habits? What are the buying habits? What would go well in your downtown? Are you answering those needs? You know, those are things that you should c consider and, you know, know the market and know your downtown market. Uh, uh, Kristen, I also had a question here. Um, if the town's objective is to build tax revenue, not necessarily jobs or quality of life, how can strengthening existing businesses and filling vacancies create more revenue when the town's revenue is based on real estate and property taxes? Well, that is a good question. Um, I just think that, you know, the more uh, that you could get people living in your downtown, the more residents you can attract, the more workers you can get into your downtown. It all is organic in a way, but it leads to uh, better economic development. And as buildings get developed, it is going to lead to better tax revenue. I mean, you know, if you really broke it down and looked at what is the cost of keeping a building vacant to the community versus what it is to have it completely filled, restored, renovated, and, and operating with all floors occupied by a mixed use of residents and lower floor commercial retail. I mean, that's gotta help your tax base um, as well. Yeah. So, I mean, you gotta look at it holistically, but that's an example. Carl, I just wanna add to that point of looking at things holistically, um, it's, I think, a kind of a chicken or the egg um, situation because people move to towns a lot of times for the quality of life. And there's more and more studies and evidence that show people want a walkable downtown. They want to be able to wake up in the morning, walk downtown to their coffee shop, you know, say hello to their neighbors. And, and now we're working from home, right? And get to work and maybe they leave for lunch and can walk to the deli and get a sandwich, you know, so, so this isn't an either or this is having a thriving downtown will increase your tax base when more people move to your town because they want to be part of the action. I mean, that's just how it works. You know, so, you know, more speaking, I think, to to the economic impact of downtowns and, and really what they can provide for your community um, and for your residents. That's that's where you see the tax base grow. No you doubt be, about that, Kristen. Very excellent point. Thank you. Um, I also had one other question come in about what market assessment tools do you recommend? Well, there's a lot of census demographics that you could do. As far as market assessment tools, there's a lot of um, research that you can do uh, to understand that this is getting a little deeper than, than this particular point. But, um, you know, understanding your, what they call tapestry segments. In other words, what types of businesses don't you have in, in your downtown? And the people that are in downtown where are they filling those needs? Are they traveling out of your downtown to get what they need? And if they are, why aren't you having that in your downtown? So, it, you know, it's, it's a little bit of a deeper dive on that point, but there, are, um, there is research and data that you, can, um, that you can get that will tell you the types of um, markets that are currently not in your downtown, where, where people are shopping and where are they getting it? and then kind of give you some guidance as to whether or not you should be trying to recruit those types of businesses into your downtown district. Um, I mean, that's really what you're looking for. So, uh, you know, again, it's a little bit deeper than what this particular webinar was targeted for, but we can get into that at some point and show you some um, resources that you can go to to try and get that kind of demographic information. A question for you as being a Main Street manager um, in Waterbury, you know, when we look at this point of economic vitality, um, there's a lot of dynamic pieces. I mean, real estate development is a huge beast. Small business development is a, is a huge beast, right? Um, just keeping up with trends. But in your perspective, what was maybe the most challenging um, thing to work on, but maybe had the biggest impact um, when you, when you got it right, or, you know, players came to the table to really tackle on a, a certain, uh, uh, action item. Well, speaking generally, I think teamwork 
um, is the important point here. So typically in, in, in a development strategy for your downtown, you're going to be dealing with, you know, who the point person is for economic development in your community. You're going to be dealing with local real estate people and brokers, building owners. It's, it's just knowing that party. But if you, the, the challenge is getting everybody on the same page, getting everybody together to work together so that there's a, a common goal. And whether it's your building or your neighbor's building, if that building gets programmed, then your building becomes the next building of opportunity, then that's a win for the district. In other words, you have to look at it as a district as a whole and not on any individual aspect. So it's teamwork. It's getting everybody to work together, all the officials to work together and understand it. The other part of that is from just basics like zoning and, and building code and, and what is this town or the city planners approach. You know, you have to have all those players on the same page and all working together. Once you've established that, then you're set up for success. And I think that um, in, in Waterbury, they've been able to, to do that quite well as far as the one-stop shop, as far as the mission for what they want to accomplish in downtowns, uh, the players coming together, the parties coming together to work on that. So I think that's really the key to it, is teamwork and getting everybody on the same page. Another question came through here, uh, which is a which is a really important one: How to improve cro cross cultural relationships? Our area has very large and diverse Latino Hispanic communities, but they remain largely separate, and economic connection momentum is limited. How to improve business unity in spite of these differences? There's no doubt that that is a challenge, um, and it's you know when you talk about the Hispanic and Latino community, but um, in in all demographics, okay? Small businesses come into a downtown, mom and pops, they set up shop. They wanna succeed, we certainly want them to succeed. I think part of it, it, it's not really a language barrier, it's conducting business issue, okay? Giving them best practices and standards on how to conduct their business. Helping them understand that the, the target audience for them is not just the demographic that they think they represent, don't leave 80% of a customer base off the table. Um, so it's, it's really, you know, bridging those gaps of understanding to help the intended downtown business person or merchant understand what their potential is in downtown. You know, one thing about downtowns, it's everybody's neighborhood. So you're going to find all types of businesses. And I know in downtown Waterbury, for example, it literally was like a, it literally is like a United Nations of merchants. And anybody from Hispanic, Eastern European, Asian, you know, merchants that have been downtown for 25, 30 years, it's all together as one melting pot. So it's really hammering home the point of best business practices, helping them succeed, helping them understand the opportunities and the municipal uh, requirements that are involved and just helping them with better business practice will help achieve that, what you're talking about and bridge those gaps. Yeah, and Carl, to add to that, you know, I, I wanna speak, I think that this is a really great um, question to, to bring up. And one here at Connecticut Main Street Center is something that, you know, we're really gonna be turning our attention to, to give more resources and more training um, to this more inclusive community, because that's really how we all we all win, we all thrive, right? Um, and, you know, speaking, if, if you're in a community that has had, you know, a, a segregation of different groups of people, you know, that that's probably been there for a while. And so it's not something that's going to change um, overnight. It's not something a couple of events um, can fix. You know, this this requires a deeper dive, um, a much slower process where community leaders and sometimes a lot of it is not based in the, the position of power, but it needs to be community leader led. And so finding the, um, you know, your allies in the community that want to bring forth, you know, this type of work is really, is really important. Um, you know, it's, 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 like Carl said, there's, there's definitely kind of, you know, technical aspects, right, to it of let's make sure that the businesses are operating and, you know, that um, 
you know, visitors, you know, want to go and business owners feel comfortable to, to write, to be in business and et cetera, et cetera. But then there's also a huge component that is um, much more intangible. Um, that is, is um, a really hard work um, to get done and, and needs to be done thoughtfully with all of leadership on board, truly, you know, and not just coming from a top down of the institutions or the government practices, but actually the community leaders. Um, that could be faith-based, that can be, you know, even just individuals who are really involved in the community. But thank you for bringing that question up. Um, another question we got here, how could a community help a sector do marketing together um, for a home decor? So this gets into that branding positioning, um, I, I think, type of question, Carl. So for home decor, um... Well, obviously, I think that, you know, once you start getting more residency in your downtown district, for example, and you're converting buildings to mixed use development, there certainly is going to be a need for that. I think if you're talking about how to do cooperative marketing approaches for the community and the um, the uh, business itself to try and market what products they have, what they, they serve, I think a lot of that happens organically. But, you know, certainly as the downtown is starting to thrive and, and progress, these things are going to have a way of taking care of themselves. So, you know, there's a lot of things that you can do marketing wise for that as far as, you know, uh, promoting the opportunities. I mean, all of the tools that we use currently, social media, it doesn't have to cost you a lot to do all that stuff. Um, you know, just getting the word out, word of mouth improving, filling your spaces, all of that is going to help um, will you get the word out about that. And the community can certainly step up in that regard. A lot of it is dealing with perception. If the community buys into your approach and what's happening and they see what's happening in your downtown district, they're going to prop it. They're going to, uh, you know, really help promote it as well and let people know about all the good things that are happening. So. And Carl, to add to that point, I just, I, I think it's a key bit that you, um, that you touched on, you know, I think that there's a lot of similarities of thinking um, between developing a really comprehensive marketing plan and how we think about um, even like recruiting our, our uh, for small businesses and our vacancies. And what I mean by that is if we have a vacancy, a physical space that we need to fill. And just like in our example, we're thinking holistically, right? So if we have all these artist businesses, is there another art-based business? Is there a psychograph that ties um, them all together? You know, similarly with the marketing plan, um, I see focusing on home decor. So I'm thinking maybe you have a lot of shops that have, you know, home decor related items. But in that niche, we can get super deep, right? We can talk about upholsterer, upholsterers. We can talk about um, furniture restoration. We can talk about interior designers. You know, we can think about paint shops, right? So now it's not just um, pillows and candles, um, right? And not knowing enough about this example, but we're now thinking holistically and how that ties into kind of our economic vitality strategy. If this is a really a segment that's huge, how can we blow it up? So we have the businesses that really support that marketing and that brand position of, you know, you, you're doing a remodel, you're, you're just moved into this neighborhood, you need to come to us right now because it's a walk around the block and we got you covered. You know, the architect, the interior designer, where you can pick your paint, where you can get your kitchen cabinets, et cetera, et cetera, right? So, um, uh, kind kind of more than what you're asking uh, for in terms of marketing together, but but how it ties back to this economic vitality, you can also kind of blow it up to think about it more holistically and comprehensively. And remember, retail never leads. It waits for a critical mass of people and customer base to to be established in your downtown. So once you've got your residency down there and workers, they're all a built-in customer base. Then you start seeing you know, retail opportunities increase. And then you get into everything you were just talking about, Kristen, about expanding upon those things. I mean, if you're building a higher residency base in your downtown, you're going to need home decor businesses down there anyway. But all of those additional 
businesses that could be, you know, uh, added on once you have that initial one in. It's 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 all future opportunities for your downtown, but you build that critical mass first. That's residency and that's workers. You know, and, and a downtown resident is going to spend more in downtown annually than a downtown worker, but both demographics are going to be a tremendous impact to your downtown district. I would also um, like to offer a, a little plug for Connecticut Main Street and all the different ways we do have resources available around these very specific questions. So one thing is actual membership. Um, we had a couple of questions that are really deep dive about like market analysis tools and other things. And that is one way, especially you Carl in our new field services role can be of assistance so that we work directly with our members to be able to do those deeper dives around uh, economic vitality in these other areas. But then we also have a wealth of um, webinars at this point and a pretty extensive video library. So some of the questions that have been asked um, have been addressed in prior um, webinars, for instance, marketing. We had one with uh, Wyndham Willimantic that was talking about how they did a kind of comprehensive marketing plan for their downtown. And with regard to vacancy specifically, we had a really interesting session with um, uh, Design Your Monday, one of our professional affiliates about um, how you can look at a vacant space and kind of get it ready and kind of saleable for potential tenants that ties into everything that you've been talking about here. And so that brings me to the next point I want to talk about, which is our professional affiliate network, where we do have a fairly extensive network um, in different areas of downtown management, including uh, some that are focused around economic development, some that are focused around um, marketing specifically, and they can provide very specialized expertise to a town even beyond what we can do. Um, so that's another area where we uh, can provide resources for anybody that is seeking it. Uh, our professional affiliates are listed on our website. All of our webinars are listed on our YouTube channel. Um, and so whether you're a member or you're not a member, we always have a way to help people uh, because these are such comprehensive topics. I mean, it's downtown development, downtown management is not easy. There are so many facets to address. As you guys said earlier, it's kind of like not just one and done, it's ongoing, it's incremental. Uh, so we do recognize that and we do uh, try to be really responsive to that. Um, we did get one other question that I wanna bring up. Um, what about our small, more rural or river historic towns? Their draw is very different from larger towns, not really large resident opportunity or one-stop shop walkable. Carl, any thoughts there? Yeah, well, listen, the, the approach of the Main Street program is adaptable to any size downtown and any layout downtown. Even with economic vitality, the principles still remain the same you know, you want to be in a position to do your assessment of what you have. You want to work with real estate um, developers for any type of programming that you need. And, you know, you want to work with your businesses within that area. So the principles of the program do not change uh, from uh, um, be just because your downtown might be from a more rural community as opposed to a larger city. It just is adaptable to the type of layout that you have. So that's, a, I think, an important critical point. And that's the great thing, I believe, about the, the Main Street program is the, the four points, they're set, but they can be adapted to any type of downtown that you have. Mm -hmm. So you may have different, you know, types of businesses that are, you know, kind of unique to your particular downtown and your rural community, but those principles about how to keep those businesses healthy how to let the world know that you have those businesses in your downtown and how to make them thrive and grow. And more importantly, how to market and promote any vacancies or areas that you have in your, in your downtown is, is still applies. You still need these, these points to apply to your downtown. So um, I think that's the good news. And I think that um, this program is adaptable to any size downtown. Another um, question here, Carl. I sit on the Local Arts and Culture Commission. Can you speak a little about creating other district types within the downtown and how might that add to the whole, like adding a cultural district, how to do it properly and what things to focus on? 
well, a lot of this will we can discuss under the promotion point, but certainly if you have an overemphasis, for example, of cultural components within your downtown, maybe you have a theater or two and businesses that kind of are clustered around, you know, the arts and culture in your downtown. That's that's good to have because then, you know, then you, you know, restaurants follow what else would complement a, a very healthy cultural and art district in your downtown. So you have this like little subset within your downtown that you want to try and promote as an asset. You know, that's definitely going to, to, to help your situation. You have destinations established, you have attractions established and you build around it from that perspective. So yeah, that there's, there's many ways that you can kind of, you know, work on that cluster and see what else you can attract that helps to complement it. Um, you know, if you have a theater and, or, you know, a museum or an arts center, what types of businesses would complement that? You know, a dance studio, um, dance supplies and, you know, art supplies, a frame shop, um, you know, a, 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 a you know, recording studios, music lessons, you know, you can go on and on with specifics about what you can add to that. But, you know, most definitely, if you have something like that set up, run with it. That's, that's awesome. And um, Judith actually just uh, put in the chat a webinar that was dedicated to establishing a municipal cultural district. So that will go much uh, greater detail on how you can get started with that. Any other questions? As we discussed, this is our first of our four point series. So we, this is economic vitality, um, where we are talking about assessment, where real estate development and small business development. Coming up next, we have our design PowerPoint, um, I'm sorry, presentation, which is the next four point. And that is all about anything visual, anything that anyone sees um, uh, is, is what we will be talking about. Um, and that one will be kind of in a mind's eye view of your downtown and we'll kind of walk with you and talk about the different components, what you have, what you don't have, and identifying areas that you can work on. Um, next, then we have promotion, which is really all about positioning yourself, branding yourself, getting the word out, marketing, um, using media to, to promote your downtown. And then the last one is organization, which uh, I think it's probably the hardest just because it has to deal with your internal organization and your team and financing and partnerships, um, you know, and really kind of the working gears of what you need to do for your downtown to be successful. Um, make sure you have the players in place. So um, in the chat are all of the links um, to, to register for those events. And as uh, Christine mentioned, um, you can get a lot more um, of us uh, it, by becoming a member at Connecticut Main Street Organization. And also um, Carl, who is our new field services director, you can reach out to him to learn more about membership or if you are a member, um, to uh, we can schedule a visit and come visit you. Um, and just before we sign off here, we did get another question. Does your organization have a relationship with Sustainable Connecticut? Um, uh, we have a wonderful relationship with them. We have been involved with them since their beginning. I actually was part of their advisory committee as they were starting to form themselves. And we continue to participate both by promoting their program, which as I'm sure you realize um, really aligns the kind of work that we do in terms of invigorating uh, neighborhoods. And we continue to participate as application reviewers when um, they get in applications, we review certain parts. So um, we definitely are aligned, I think, in, in our core values and, and what we do in our terrific program. And we, we certainly um, advocate for them as well. Excellent, great, perfect. Um, oh, great. I just saw somebody's made it to bronze status with them and they're going for silver. That's wonderful, excellent, that's great. Yeah. We need, honestly, all of the sustainable efforts across the state that we can get. So congratulations to all, all towns that have received their certification, good for you. 
Yeah, congrats. If you want to advance, Kristen. Yeah. Um, so I was just going to say uh, thank you very much to our presenters. And also, Kristen gave you a preview of our next uh, webinars that are coming up in the four-point series. Just so you know, they're all on Tuesdays. It's basically like the next three Tuesdays. And then in late February, we're going to have our uh, first kind of like recovery and resiliency webinar on food halls and public markets with Chelsea Muda from um, Crypto Market in Hartford. So that's very exciting. So a lot of great things coming up. Uh, we hope we see you all there. As a reminder, today's recording will also be made available on our YouTube channel, along with uh, other materials that were referenced in the presentation. We'll make those available as well. So again, just another thank you to our sponsors. Honestly, we couldn't do it without you. We appreciate you so much. And again, to Liberty Bank, who is sponsoring this four-point series. So thank you, everyone, for coming today. Have a great day, and we'll see you next week. <laughs>